uh, the Quran mentions that the people went into a state of disarray and those jinns wanted vengeance. Symbolism is out, out there. Um, and uh, it's very, it's just the last story I just want to share. Uh, it's from the Quran as well. Surah um, 37, Surah at safa verse number 125. And so, as you know, Prophet Suleiman was the prophet that would have the angels and the jinn, not the angels, sorry, the jinn, the animals, everything would be at his command. And he would go on to build that Temple of Solomon that's so highly revered. And he built some sort of architecture that was beyond anybody's like, comprehension and how he did it. Uh, and so after the death of Prophet Suleiman, uh, the Quran mentions that the people went into a state of disarray and those jinns wanted vengeance for, uh, you know, because so Prophet Suleiman from the good jinns helped them build that temple. They wanted vengeance. And, and so people started going back to idol worship and all kinds of evil things. That they started sacrificing children and all kinds of strange things were happening after Prophet Suleiman's death. And this, this intermediary prophet that would come after uh, Prophet Suleiman would be Prophet Ilyas. And Allah mentions it in Surah Safar. I encourage everybody to read this surah um, just to understand how badly you can uh, mess up and not realize what you're doing. And, and so the, the people, when Prophet Ilyas came and saw them, they went from a government of Prophet Suleiman of prosperity and beauty and to the extent that the animals would trust the humans to complete and utter darkness. And they started worshiping something called a Ba'an. A Ba'an. Have you ever heard of that before? No, what's, what's a Ba'an? Okay, a Ba'al, B-A apostrophe L. L, yeah. So those are what today we call modern day obelisks. Okay. Is that the big okay, thing now, that's in uh, Washington, D.C.? The Washington it, Monument. And it's it around Egypt, the entire right? world. It's around the entire world. And any place you see that, it's an indication that we have succeeded. Okay, now pay attention to this. Uh, uh, what, is, what does uh, Prophet Elias say in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Are you worshipping that? Are you worshipping this, this, you know, like pyramid-like structure? And then he said, uh, what, and, and you have abandoned the best of creators to worship that. And, and you can see the utter disgust in Prophet Ilyas's, um, in Prophet Ilyas's uh, temperament with them. He, he's disgusted that you could worship something like that. Now, people don't know what that is. Right now, we can say it's a Masonic symbol. It's a it's a devilish symbol. There is there is a obsession with these jinn worshiping people or Satanists or whatever you want to call them, and the, the human sexuality. There is an obsession with it. Okay, and so what these these structures are representing, it is the reproductive organ of a man. The phallic symbol. The phallic symbol, and people are worshiping it during the time of Prophet Iliad. And, and there's a story as to where that comes from in ancient Egypt. If you know the story of Osiris and Set, do you know the story? Osiris is one of their gods, right? So Osiris was the reigning god of Egypt at the time. And they, they, by the way, if you trace these back, they actually fall into a category of jinn. So these are not gods. But people depicted them as gods because they had powers. So anyway, uh, th that's why Tawhid comes and just kind of shuts all this stuff down. Tawhid is the most beautiful and puritanical sense of divinity. Okay? And you just, you know, just stay away from this nonsense. This is garbage. Put it Tawheed, away. Tawhid, for audience who are not uh, Arabic speaking, Tawhid is the unity of God, as in the, the creator of the universe. Um, I don't want to say he or she, because God is either he or she, but the word Allah, which is uh, not masculine or feminine, Allah, the creator, he's, uh, Allah should be the point of all worship right as opposed to anything yeah. else yeah and, and so and so uh osiris is that is that reigning king and he marries his sister isis pay attention to the names the names are very isis isis uh and so osiris marries his sister and they have two children okay and, and so his brother osiris's brother set becomes jealous and so he kills him and then he puts Osiris in this golden chest and sets it into the Nile for it to get lost. Isis, out of an act of love, goes and retrieves that chest 
brings it back, but before she has a chance to resurrect him, Set, the brother of Osiris again, cuts his body into 14 pieces. And so Isis again would go on to get her husband's body parts except one out of the 14. That would be his organ. And so, uh, so what had happened with his organ is that Seth had thrown it into the Nile and the beasts of the Nile had devoured it. And so Isis, seeing that that part of her husband was missing, would create the first obelisk. Yes? Obelisk, by definition, means shaft of Baal. <laughs> it literally means that. So he would create, she would create that and put it in place for him. Right? And, and the Masons and like the Satan worshippers have an obsession with that body part. I'm glad you watched our video. Please follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter to be notified of future video releases.